What we will do in this uh, last session here is uh, I was supposed to just uh, share with you why and how we started the flip learning here at, at Kehlur. And then Christian Omar from NU Skolin will uh, share with you how it was to establish a new independent school, which is a very difficult part, task here in Iceland. And I can uh, say that because we are an independent school here, Kehlur. Well, why did we start? I, I do not have a, a PowerPoint show. And I will just talk very shortly. Uh, Kaylir, uh, we the last uh, beginning of May, we had our 10 years anniversary. So when we started 10 years ago, as an independent school, and we were collecting a high tuition fees from our students. And we had, and we still have a program called uh, University of Bridge. Um, the average age of those students is about 30 years. People uh, that are actually dropouts from the uh, secondary school system, they come here, take the university bridge, and from here they can go to whatever university they like. And uh, well, tomorrow we have a graduation ceremony, and we will graduate a student number 1500 uh, from the university bridge. But uh, in the first year, we had mature students. 30 years old, they are paying high tuition fees, and they are motivated, they want to come into school again and have another chance in life. We had new teachers, and we were creating a new school, and so we didn't have any traditions, and that was uh, very good for us, because we could do whatever we liked. We did not have a history that, we, uh, that gave us some limits. As in, as you should learn traditional schools. We had up to 100 students. We were at the other side of the street in the old church. Excellent uh, teachers. And they were giving their presentations very traditionally. But then we noticed that all the teachers, all the students with their laptops, they were sitting there and it was only the first two rows that were following the teachers. The others, paying a lot of tuition fees, were on their laptops, Facebook, uh, news, whatever. So we thought, hey, here's something wrong. We have to do something. We, we will not survive with this. And uh, we started just uh, to look, and we had a common uh, think tank, so to speak. And uh, just by coincidence, we came to something uh, called flipped classroom. We didn't know anything about it by John Bergman and Aaron Sam. And I was uh, able to get contact with John Bergman, and he sent us a post and uh, uh, encouraged us. So we decided, hey, let's look into this. So what we did was that we bought iPads for all the teachers. And it was just before, it was this time of the year when they were about to go to for the summer holidays. Go home with your iPads, play with it, but keep in mind this idea, this strange idea, flipped learning. How can we use that or should we use that? And then when we came back in August, in the middle of August, we again, we met as a, as a team and the teachers were sharing their experience. This is what I found out, and so on and so forth. And the conclusion was, yes, let's do it. So we jumped into the big pool. That is the reason why we went into it. Because we saw that the traditional uh, method of, like I'm doing now, one standing in front, uh, in front of the group and the preaching, that wasn't working. Uh, so this uh, was the main reason, with the uh, adult people paying uh, high tuition fees, but they were not listening. So we had to do something. This was the only reason. It was the students. We were not getting to the students, despite the fact that we had those very good, active teachers. But they were not getting to the, the students. And uh, we still are 
We say that today we are the flipped school of Iceland. That's what we say, or we believe ourselves. And this is uh, actually the third time we have a conference or a workshop like, like this one here. And uh, we have had over 1,000 Icelandic teachers coming and visiting us. Uh, many of our teachers have been visiting schools all around Iceland, just presenting what we are doing and so on and so forth. But we are not completely a flipped school. And the main reason is that uh, many of our, uh, of our staff, they are not uh, teachers in the background, like, uh, let's say, the flight instructors. They are pilots. They're flying with Iceland Air or WOW or Air or whatever, and they come here uh, as contractors, stundakennars. And uh, what, are they, what idea do they have of teaching? It is like they, it was when they were at school themselves. It was a teacher standing in front of the group and preaching. And I love the sentence from one of them. He said, if I am not talking, I'm afraid that they are not learning. And I think that is the, I had this idea myself. Maybe you remember, mm -hmm. 100 years ago when I was teaching you. Uh, well, that is the traditional. Uh, the, the uh, teacher is the uh, main actor in, in the play called School. So uh, what we have been doing, and we are doing now, and we have our consultants from Kenslusvið, uh, here at, at Kehler, and uh, we take it one on one. Sigrun Svava, one of our teachers, she sits down and others with those less experienced teachers and uh, encourage them. We are now taking actually the next serious step. And that step is if you are instructor or teacher at Kehler or at the Kehler staff, you have no option. You have to go flipping. Uh, and uh, we have, to, uh, but we have to do it smoothly. We have to. We just can't say to someone like a pilot or air air, uh, air air mechanic who's never been at school as a teacher, you have to go flipping. You have to help people. Have help those people to take those steps. Because people are afraid of the unknown. Uh, another thing that has. Um, made us uh, more difficult to say we are a flipped uh, school. We are here in a flipped classroom. As you can see, the collective work of students, that's our main focus. Students, they teach each, each other, and the teacher is going from one table to another, if needed. But where did we start? Did you notice how the table were designed there? how you were sitting there. You were sitting there like in a very traditional classroom. And actually that room is the room of the university bridge. And why was it that, and is it like that today? There's only one reason, the damn final exams. And if you have listened to, uh, and I looked at uh, Marika's uh, uh, video, which was sent out to you. It's the final, I think it's the final slides, uh, uh, referring to Eric uh, Asur, uh, where he says, uh, exams is the silent killer of schools. Something like that. Learning. Learning, of learning. Yes, of learning, not schools, of learning. <laughs> and that is so true. And as Marika uh, mentioned this morning, the students should not be learning for the exams that should be learning for themselves. So that is one of the uh, uh, obstacles we have to deal with. It's the final exams. From here, in some cases, like in the, in the aviation uh, education, we have to, because there are regulations, European regulation, that says you have to have final exam and the table should be so and so and so. So that's one of the problems we are dealing with. Uh, our former students, that uh, when we started, we did not have so strong emphasis on the final exams.
But when our students went to the universities, they said, hey, we are not prepared for final exams. So uh, that, wa that was another dilemma. The, uh, um, we had to prepare our students for university, uh, the university level, and it was demand from them, you have to prepare us for taking final exams. So therefore, we still have that, are dealing with that problem. So uh, that will take a long time, I, I believe, to, uh, to get rid of those uh, final exams, uh, have more focus on the formative uh, evaluation of uh, students as a part of the learning process. So in very short, this is uh, uh, the reason we did uh, why we did go into flipped learning here at, at Kaler. Um, and um, those are the, also the most the problems we are dealing with. But uh, I think it's very important that we did it, uh, so to speak, uh, as, a, as a team. It was a team decision. That's not my decision to the staff. Hey, you are supposed to do it. It's a collective decision. I think of that, and because it's a collective decision, uh, that has uh, led to that the culture here in the building is more flipped culture than a traditional culture, because it's not mine; it's ours, and I think that is very, very uh, important. Um, my advice to uh, other uh, administrators at schools would be that, of course, the administrator has to be committed. If the principal is not, does not believe in it, then you w won't go there. You all know that. And uh, also, I would also advise principals that want to take the school into that direction to find those who have um, the fighters. The fighters in the, class, uh, in the staff, those, are the, those who are willing to take the commitment, three, four, five teachers in every school, and have them as a kind of uh, the flip committee, the flip fighters, and let them deal with those who are not ready to go. Because in every school there are people that say, well, I'm not ready, I've been here for 20 years, and you don't tell me what to do, and so We all know that. Don't let the principal deal with it, let the fighters of the staff deal with it. And gradually uh, the others will do as they did, uh, they are doing in Copa World now, municipality. They just give up and go to another school or another work. And that's good. <coughs> so this was about what I would like to share with you, why we did go into this and uh, what we are dealing with. And of course, we have had very, very strong uh, support from, from Jen Bergman, which is, uh, he is just one of our friends. And if you are really interested in uh, flipped classrooms, I think you should all uh, participate in uh, John Bergman's uh, mastery learning. You can go into uh, a distance learning, just you take it whenever you are ready for it. And he's taking you through a class of flipped learning. And you get a certificate when you finish. It's online all the time. Very, very helpful for those who are beginners and also those who are experienced in, in the flipped learning. Just look at it at the John Bergman Mastery Class, I think he calls it in flipped learning. You know that. Yeah, okay. So, Christian Omar, the revolutionary guy from Hamburg. Can we have any questions? Or? Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so what is the difference that you're seeing in your students now with the fifth class and before? What's the main difference? I think it can be answered in one question from our students. I wish the school had been like this when I was, last time I was in school. They are so pleased with it. And um, also, gradually, I think John Bergman and Sam started about 12 years ago and the word is spreading and more and more schools all around the world are starting to flip. And now we are having some evidence, research and uh, surveys from different schools in different countries. And everywhere the result is the same. Uh, school quality, however you uh, define it, 
uh, you know, in terms of higher marks on uh, final exam or whatever exam you are taking. Uh, happiness among students, staff, parents, less uh, uh, social problems in the classroom, of course, because students are more active. And whatever you look at, it's all positive. And actually, I can say, I'm just like Gunnar in hallelujah. <laughs> uh, I don't see anything negative about it. Of course, there are students that would uh, listen to uh, what they do, uh, are supposed to listen to at home and so on and so forth. But they are there still. But we will have fewer of them. And again, also referring to uh, the uh, presentation this morning, this uh, having students working as group. That means you will have more teachers. It's not only the, the teacher, because they're helping, supporting each other. So they create this cult culture of learning. And they even, uh, when someone is not participating, it's not the teachers that, hey, you're not participating, it's the group. And I think that's a very good thing. Do you have any, like, uh like, because you're still doing the final exam, yeah. do you have any kind of number like, oh, there, the grades are like 40% higher or...? Yeah, we have uh, seen it, well, from the... Uh, just recently got uh, numbers from the University of Iceland. Many of our students go from the University Bridge to the University of Iceland. And uh, they are getting higher marks there than uh, five years ago. And it's a big difference, a really big difference. But what is most important for us, we contact most of our students that uh, graduate from us, and just to hear from them, how, are you, how is it going in your, uh, in your work or in your studies, if they go to universities from us. And they miss the flipped learning. They come to the university and say, oh, I wish we had the flipped learning there. Because, as you know, in the University of Iceland, you are going to, uh, to business studies and you go to a school of B, and there are 200 students there, and there's one teacher there, and he doesn't care if you are listening or not. So it's, it's quite a different uh, approach, and they say we miss it. And uh, they say it's, uh, it's, we are very well prepared. So, so we are pleased. They please us. Yes, I was just wondering, uh, do you think it works for every subject and every age group, every yeah. school level? Yeah, uh, good question, because uh, it's very common when you're presenting something, like uh, if you are combining uh, municipalities, I mean, if you look, or you're presenting some new ideas, those who don't like it say, oh, it's a brilliant idea, but it does not work for me. I've heard that from so many teachers. But I can say that flipped learning goes for every, every subject. Ivar Wahlbergsson, the flipper of the year 2017, he is not a math teacher or a chemistry teacher. He is teaching Yelstor, uh, machinery, uh, and uh, metal mechanics. And he's doing that. And he has even forced his students, not forced them, he's made the atmosphere that they're learning Danish from him. Because there are booklets and the directions for the machinery in Danish. And those guys are Danish, I hate Danish, sorry. <laughs> and he, well, if you're gonna work on board a ship and you get a new machine, then you have to be able to learn to read Danish. So he gives them the assignment. Here's a brochure, now translate it. And there you go, three of them together, uh, Google, translate, or ask each other, and translate from Danish to German. So I see it can, I see some Swedish uh, video, uh, a guy teaching people to build their own uh, guitar, and so on and so forth. It, it, it's here. It's not a subject, it's up here in our mind. It's a mindset. Sorry.